first episode of Second Edition. I'm Stephanie Swensrud. I'm Nicholas Egan. On our show today, we will be talking about the surge in the Pokemon market, plus Nate's latest announcements on new programs. And to top it all off, a segment on how you can make some amazing bread right from the comfort of your own home. If you have a passion for technology and data, listen up. Two new post-diploma programs are starting at Nate this year. Data analytics and cybersecurity are the two new year-long certificate programs. Cyber threats are evolving constantly, and Nate wants to help fill the demand for cybersecurity experts. Students will up their skill sets so they can stand out in an industry that reported a 350% increase in attacks in the last year. John Zabiak used to teach standalone classes on cybersecurity, but with the growing demand for protection, it just wasn't enough. Worldwide, there's a shortage of almost 3 million positions in the cybersecurity field. So uh, it really is one of the growing fields in IT and it's an important one as well. And as for the data analytics program, students will learn how to make business decisions based on data. Registration for both programs is open now. The Edmonton Police are warning those who are looking to buy PCs from Kijiji and Facebook Marketplace. Due to the recent grab and runs, the police are currently investigating these two robberies and on the lookout for individuals who may be planning to sell their computers so they can catch these people in the act. The police are encouraging sellers to make sure the money goes through before you hand over the product, although that may be tough during these contactless times. Spring cleaning is coming up, and when you clean out your garage, consider taking your used bikes to Bike Edmonton. They'll use the bikes to teach youth in need a new skill. A team of volunteers run the Spoke program out of a small shop beside McEwen, where teens learn how to repair a used bike that they then get to keep after the program. Things are a little different now due to COVID, but Molly Turnbull, project coordinator at Bike Edmonton, says that the program still helps kids who may have trouble learning in traditional settings. Some of the youth who have failed in a lot of other learning situations actually really love to come back to the spoke and are eager to just focus in and work with the group and do what we're doing. The shop is only able to take so many donations, so you have to email them ahead of time with pictures. You can email them at info at bikeedmonton.ca. Pokemon cards are the hottest item in the cards market currently, and I was able to talk to a local Edmonton collector about the recent spike in demand for Pokemon cards. He shares his thoughts on the recent decision made by stores to put their Pokemon cards among the more expensive items in the stores. Stores across Edmonton are constantly running out of stock, and local hobbyists and collectors are left with no other option than to wake up early and hope to snag some packs when they restock. It's extremely tough. To be honest, those cards are expensive, and due to high demand, not low supply. So <laughs> there you go. It's it's a tough market. Um, it's hard to get your hands on anything nowadays with the, the prices. So. Hearing the difficulties a collector of his caliber is facing to get cards makes a casual hobby seem impossible to start. Nate's women's basketball team is back in the gym thanks to Phase 2 restrictions allowing college sports to resume practices. And the Oil Kings are back in action and off to a hot start. Nathan Carlson joins us now with more on sports. That's right, with the rest of Phase 2 restrictions in place, college teams are allowed back to practice while following public health guidelines. Yeah. Yeah. After a three-month-long pause due to previous restrictions, the Ooks women basketball team hit the court on Friday. Players are excited to get back on the court as a way to improve their mental health. We've only had one practice, but after that practice, I felt a little bit clearer, if that makes sense. It's just more enlightening and I get more stuff done. I'm a lot more productive when I have physical activity on a regular basis. The women's basketball team will continue to practice three days a week in hopes of a regular season next fall. The Edmonton Oil Kings are starting the week off strong with a practice in preparation for three straight games this weekend. The Oil Kings are off to a hot start this season going 4-0 due to a strong performance by the entire team. After an 11th month break due to the pandemic, everyone is thrilled to be back on the ice. You know, I think the guys are excited to get back. Well, they were excited to get back, get playing again, and get competing. Uh, just, to get, to, just to get themselves in that atmosphere again. The Oil Kings will look to keep their winning streak alive as they face off against the Red Deer Rebels with 20 games left in the season. 
That game gets underway Friday at 6 at the Downtown Community Arena. That's always a great rivalry. I may have to watch that one online. Thanks, Nathan. On Monday, the Alberta government announced further easing of health restrictions as a result of Step 2. Nate will now be allowed athletics and practices to resume, as well as labs to continue. But with the term coming to a close, one question is on all our minds. Will we be back to normal for next semester? Emma Baker has more. As of yesterday, it has officially been one year since schools in Alberta were told to shut down. I had the opportunity to speak with Josh Bowen, Nate's Director of Relaunch, about what Nate has done so far and what we can expect in the future. How has Nate reopened so far? Nate, uh, Nate closed uh, the majority of our activities back in uh, March 2020 based on government orders. Uh, and we were able to pivot 93% of our, our face-to-face -face learning offerings um, within four days. Starting in uh, July 2nd, uh, we had a very limited reopening to allow uh, students who needed to complete practical hands-on uh, assessments and, and key learning. Uh, and then in September 2020, um, we, uh, we opened up uh, for those, those essential activities that had to happen uh, on, on campus and had to be face-to-face. -face. So in September, we had uh, about 5,800 students and staff on campus every week. Uh, spread across all of our uh, all of our five campuses, uh, and then that expanded to about seventy two to seventy four hundred students and staff uh, every week in January. What has been the biggest challenge of reopening? Some of the bigger challenges have been, you know, really truly understanding uh, the needs and understanding um, what the restrictions are that are in place from from government and, and making sure that everybody is aware of those uh, everybody understands and then that everybody's client with it um, and making sure that we're doing everything we can to keep people safe so that we can continue to stay open so that we can continue to have learning going on is this where you expected we'd be by now i think there's there's so many different pieces that are at play within the pandemic uh, as nate goes we've had no outbreaks on campus. Uh, we haven't had any cases of major transmission uh, and we've been able to keep the vast majority of our programs running. And so I, th I think that's successful. I don't know if you'll be able to answer this one, but what would be the best outcome uh, going from this term into next? The best outcome is that everybody's uh, safe, uh, everybody is healthy, and everybody's able to graduate. Thank you so much for your time, Josh. <laughs> Thanks, Emma. Hopefully we'll be back to normal soon. For second edition, I'm Emma Baker. Nate's popular student hangout, The Nest Tap House and Grill, has been closed for a year and is looking for a fall 2021 reopening. That's right, with some rebranding, The Nest is looking to renew their student connection. Here's Eli Fico with more info. Thanks guys, I'm here with Michelle Dirksen, the manager of The Nest at Nate. Uh, thank you so much for doing this interview. Uh, now, how long have you been the manager at The Nest? Um, I have been the manager at The Nest in one capacity or another since 2011. Um, I have worked at The Nest um, for over 20 years. All right. Uh, so when Alberta eased restrictions back in February, was the nest allowed to open or was it just strictly takeout? Um, so we've actually, it's, we're on the one year anniversary, March 15th of when um, the COVID closed everything. COVID closed everything. Um, we attempted to do an open uh, last fall when things were a little bit safer, um, but we found that we could not ensure the safety of our staff or the clientele at that time fully. So we made the difficult decision not to open until this upcoming fall. Okay, so the reopening didn't have the results you expected. Correct. Okay. Um, so when you did have to shut down, um, were there any lessons that you could bring forward towards the reopening in the fall? Absolutely. Um, you know, this whole year has really been about perspective and being able to pivot and change on a, you know, on the spot. Um, when we reopen, um, I have some exciting news to share. Um, we have rebranded ourselves um, and we have also adjusted our menus and whatnot um, to uh, portray the new the new norm the new world um, so we now um, are not necessarily looking for you know the big groups and the group sharing items like uh, jugs of draft or a big big group share or plate just of nachos individual meals. just individual meals a la carte um, so we've adjusted our menu um, we've adjusted our labor um, and like I said we have rebranded the nest tap house grill into the nest eatery um, just to portray the the, the new the new times and um 
So you would say that the nest is going to look different to students on the roof? Absolutely. Um, it's not going to be night and day different, um, but with restrictions, which we'll still have to follow come fall opening, um, there'll still be smaller crowds. Um, and uh, obviously on-site events will be affected by that. Um, Nate Sa, who owns the nest, has done a wonderful job of doing virtual events. Um, however, once the nest opens, um, it'll be a little normalcy back, but different. So we're really excited to welcome back all our clientele. Okay then. Thank you so much for taking your time to do this interview. Um, this has been Eli Fico, second edition. After the break, we'll hear from our very own Robert Bradley. He'll show us how to make bakery quality bread using things you already have in your kitchen. Also, our reporter Lucas Johnson will run down the three hottest TV shows streaming right now. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to second edition. Coming up, we have three great books to bust boredom, plus three TV shows you should be streaming right now. But first, Robert Bradley is gonna bake us some bread. Hi, I'm Robert Bradley with Second Edition News. Are you also a student looking for a way to keep yourself fed, or even just looking for a new hobby for yourself? Well, lucky for you, today I'm gonna to show you a simple and easy recipe for how to keep yourself fed with some bread. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is gather all your ingredients and utensils to make sure you're not missing anything before we start. For this recipe, you'll need four ingredients. Those are all-purpose flour, salt, yeast, and warm water. The items you'll need to help you make the bread are one measuring cup, one set of measuring spoons, cling wrap, baking parchment, an oven-safe dish with a lid, a mixing bowl, and a whisker. So now we're gonna measure out our ingredients and mix them together. Measure out three cups of flour and dump it into your mixing bowl. Next is one teaspoon of salt, Add a half teaspoon of yeast. And last for our ingredients, make sure to add your one and a half cups of warm water. Now that we've got all our ingredients together, start to stir it up until it's mixed together nicely. So now that we've got all our ingredients mixed together, we're gonna cover it up with the cling wrap and let it sit for eight to 12 hours to let the yeast rise. All right, so now that we've taken some time to let the dough rise, we're gonna remove it from this bowl, put it onto a floured surface, and start to knead the bread. So after you're done kneading your dough and rolling it back into a ball, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to pick it up and put it back into your original container on a piece of parchment. While you're waiting for your dough, this is a good time to put your dish into the oven and preheat it at 230 degrees Celsius. Lift up your dough by the parchment and place it into your dish. After your first 30 minutes of cooking, open up the oven and remove the lid and let it cook open top for another 15 minutes. Now let's taste it to see how it is. Mmm, that's good bread. Well, now you know a cheap and easy way for yourself. For Second Edition News, I'm Robert Bradley. Hello, my name is Lucas Johnson and today we'll be going over my top three trending shows that you can watch online on streaming services right now. Our first show is the show WandaVision, a Disney Plus exclusive. WandaVision presents us with a blend of classic sitcom television and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It has an overarching sense of mystery that slowly begins to unravel as the series progresses. The show maintains its charming Marvel humor in many moments of the show, but also sheds some light on the character's grief following previous installments in the franchise. This is Marvel's first shot at a TV show style project with many more on the way and is currently the number one trending show in the world. You can stream WandaVision on Disney Plus, which will require you to subscribe and pay a monthly fee of $8.99 a month. The Walking Dead has made a glorious comeback in its 10th season. For those who aren't aware, 
This series is based off the hit comic series from which it started and was developed into a groundbreaking TV series filled with horror, drama, and action. The show hit a bit of a dry spell with audiences between seasons eight and nine, but has jumped considerably high in audiences, reaching collective ratings of over 80%. The season airs on AMC and is set to finish by April 2021. To close out our segment with the third and final show that I'll be highlighting today, we have none other than The Mandalorian and its second season. The Mandalorian is a story told in the Star Wars universe that follows a bounty hunter that takes a liking to a mysterious child he comes across during one of his jobs. From there, he concludes that he must reunite it with its own kind and find its family, which makes for some thrilling adventure and action throughout the show. Season two closes strongly with audiences new to Star Wars who will be left very satisfied, while longtime fans of the series will not only be satisfied, but left recounting their childhood and basking in the nostalgia. The Mandalorian can also be found on Disney Plus and can be viewed for a low fee of $8.99 a month for subscription to the channel. I've been Lucas Johnson, and thank you for watching this segment of the show. Hello, I'm Christine Peters, and this is my Books for Boredom Breaker. I've got three books right over here to knock you dead with their excitement and adventure. They are Holes by Lewis Satcher, Gary Paulson's Brian's Winter, and Kevin Kwan's Crazy Rich Asians. All of these will keep you entertained for hours on end. The first book is Holes from, from Lewis Satcher. It's a thrilling story of a young boy falsely accused of a crime, forced to spend a year and a half digging holes on a huge, dried-up lake in the boiling hot sun. You would think that wouldn't be so hard, but it is hard. The sun beats down on them, there are rattlesnakes and poisonous lizards, and they can't take a break, no matter what. The second book is Brian's Winter by Gary Paulson. It's such an intense story. Brian had not been res if Brian had not been rescued, he would have to survive through winter in the Canadian wilderness. Winter in Canada can be a real nightmare. Freezing temperatures, snowstorms. A guy without his wits could freeze to death. But Brian manages to pull through. It's not easy, but a survivor never gives up. The last one, and one of my personal favorites, is Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. The story tells where Nick takes his girlfriend Rachel to Singapore to meet his family before they go to his best friend Colin's wedding. But Rachel is totally taken off guard when she comes to this new world. A world full of lots and lots of rich people crazy rich people. And these relatives are not always nice. Some believe she will be Nicholas's downfall. All three of these books are full of thrills, chills, suspense, and a little bit of adult comedy. I'm Christine Peters, second edition. To second edition, I'm Nicholas Egan. And I'm Stephanie Swensrud. Tune in next week for when the other half of our class takes over. It's going to be one you won't want to miss. Thanks.